So now I have, I'm kind of switching to a different set of questions in this. I'm just, I asked everyone I'm interviewing, um, so you know obviously that Chaz committed suicide, so I'm just at, um, reading off some statistics about suicide and just asking for people's responses on them. Um, okay. So, uh, let me get them. So, suicide is the second cause of death for Americans age 15 to 24. On average, there are 123 suicides per day. Men are 3.5 times more likely to die by suicide. Rates of mental health disorders are 20 to 40 percent higher for women than men. Women are more likely to report suicidal thoughts than men. Firearms account for 51 percent of all suicides in the U.S. And men are 1.5 times more likely to use a firearm than women. The day that he died, April 4th, 2011, uh, 2012, sorry, 2012, and we, um, you and me and mom and Rennie had traveled up to Minnesota to do a college visit at the University of Minnesota. You guys were on spring break, Jazz was working, and he was at home on his own. Corey was still in college in Texas and he came home that Wednesday and I remember driving down the street, Marston Avenue, and coming up upon our house and I could see his truck, the purple 1998 Toyota Tacoma, which we still have, parked in the driveway. And I remember saying to mom, that's not a good sign, not knowing how true that really was. So we pulled into the driveway and like we always did when we had family trips, our minivan was pretty junked out with stuff and uh, we were all unpacking. And at some point, mom said to Rennie, can you go up and check on Chaz? And that's when Rennie went upstairs and opened the door and Rennie found Chaz, and it was clear that he had taken the shotgun and put it in his mouth and pulled the trigger. He would have would have been a tremendous Marine and a warrior and uh, because he, I remember him telling me once about, we were talking about type A personalities, and he said, Dad, everyone in the Marines is type A. <laughs> and, but there's some that are more type A than others, and I think Chaz was one of those. Young men come in, and me is one of them, they come in the service, and uh, they kind of know everything from the streets. They know it all. Corey and Chaz took skating lessons when they were five or six years old and he really didn't listen to the instructor at all. He just kind of went out there and just started doing his own thing and he never really learned to stop. He would just go <laughs> as fast as he could and then just crash into the board. The, the military tries to break that down some and it's rough how they do it, but they gotta get, they gotta get that out of them and then develop them into being a soldier, an airman, a marine. And, and so, I mean, and that's the thing. I mean, let's, 18, 19, 20, 21 year olds, they're, they're malleable, um, they're, I was, gullible is maybe not the right word. I remember him talking about how, like after boot camp, he would, you know, show up at these girls' doorsteps in his like marine suit. And I think that he was really impressed by that whole, <laughs> fantasy of, you know, being a Marine and, you know, being the elite in, you know, the military. I think a lot of people 
uh, tend to join the military, you know, as a stepping stone. You know, it's, it's as you know, it's competitive out there, you know, and so you definitely got to market yourself and put in, you know, an elite branch on your resume, I think definitely helps them out. What I found basic training was all about was a lot of it was dehumanization. It was um, depersonalization. And it was, a lot of it was brutal. It was brutalization, you know, because um, you, you need to be an animal if you're going to kill somebody. Oh, definitely. Um, I, I even think he walks differently. You know, his personality changed a lot. He's a lot more serious. We become more, like you said, that egotistic. You know, we wanna, we wanna execute. We wanna lead. We wanna make everybody proud. Taking aside the method, why more men attempt suicide than more than women? Um, because I, my understanding is that the factors that play into why someone would take their own life are cross-cultural, gender, socioeconomic, racial barriers. I mean, I I I, I know that men are. We got this proudness about us that uh, makes us not want to, you know, say things. Chance was always somebody that smiled. You've never seen any any threat or any danger. You know, the other statistic that she didn't mention was that you know, um, you know, allegedly um, that a veteran or a soldier kills himself every 65 minutes. You know, 22 a day. Chance was a reservist, so Chance had to focus on being a Marine, focus on education, and focus on getting a job. I think it kind of fast forwarded him into adulthood a lot quicker than, you know, most people. I don't know the answers to this, but I, I do feel strongly about one of the, our biggest problems in today's society is mental illness and covering up m mental illness until it's too late and then we talk about it. Well, that's not the time. I think everybody goes through hardship. Um, I think the fact that, you know, a lot of the, the friends I had were, you know, gun owners. And it's a lot easier to pull a trigger, you know. You know, however, I, I just, I still don't understand, you know, where the disconnect is. I wish I had more answers. Um, other than, you know, I mean, I know f at least my answer for, for veterans is help them to make the transition, you know. Don't just say thank you for your service, you know, find a way to listen, to connect. We need to take away the negative stigmas of going to talk to a counselor or a psychiatrist or whoever you need to talk to. Reach out to people if you are having those feelings. should always reach out, scream it out loud or something. Mm -hmm. You know, get it off your chest. Don't don't burden, don't hold it in, you know. And I guess my other bit of advice, and I get this from my, my dear father-in-law, who was a World War II vet who passed away about uh, 18 months ago. And um, he said he thought the opposite of, um, the opposite of militarism wasn't um, pacifism, it was feminism which I thought was a really interesting, you know, concept that um, maybe if we had more women, you know, um, in, the, in the military, in government, in power, um, in charge, that maybe we wouldn't have the kind of situ situation we have now. I always thought that was kind of an interesting uh, assessment. I, I believe he's right, but, you know, I don't know if we're able to see that in our lifetime.